Thank you. Uh, Margaret Greenwood. Thank you, Madam Deputy yes. Speaker. This budget was a big disappointment for the millions of people who were worried about the cost of living crisis. It failed to provide sufficient funding for public services that have been devastated by over a decade of Conservative austerity, and it failed to address the climate emergency. The Office for Budget Responsibility has warned that the cost of living crisis could rise at its fastest rate for 30 years. Yet the Chancellor failed to raise the minimum wage to at least £10 an hour, something the Labour Party committed to do by 2020 back in 2017. Yes, yes, yes. The Chancellor could have kept the £20 uplift to universal credit in place, helping 6 million households across the country, but he chose not to. Instead, he gave a £4 billion tax cut to banks and a £12 billion tax cut to online giants. Shame. Numerous charities and civil society organisations, including the Joseph Rowntree Foundation, Child Poverty Action Group and Action for Children, campaigned for the £20 uplift to remain in place. And Labour won two votes in this House earlier this year, calling on the Government to cancel the cut. Shamefully, on both occasions, the Government whips its MPs to abstain. The Government will point to changes to the work allowances and the taper rate, but as the Disability Benefits Consortium has pointed out, nothing is done at all to help disabled people who are not in work. As they point out, this is particularly concerning given that employment rates are much lower for disabled people than the general population, while for many their disability or health conditions means that paid work is not a realistic prospect. And let's not forget, too, that six million households have been hit by the Conservatives' cut to universal credit, but then less than a third of that figure, just 1.9 million households, will benefit from the changes to work allowances and taper rates. And the government's failing schools, too. The National Education Union has described the additional money for education recovery, just 1.8 billion of new funding, as completely inadequate, while the government's own former Education Recovery Commissioner, Sir Kevin Jones, called it incredibly disappointing. He said, and I quote, the short-term saving offered by a limited recovery programme will be dwarfed by the long-term cost of successive cohorts leaving education with lower skills, an effect that will be most apparent in our poorest communities. The Chancellor announced that, coupled with spending increases announced in 2019, the extra money for school funding would, quote, restore per pupil funding to 2010 levels in real terms. But as the National Association of Head Teachers has rightly pointed out, this merely represents a failure to invest in children's futures for over a decade. When it comes to local authorities and the provision of essential services, it's a similar story. Conservative austerity has taken its toll on Wirral. Between 2010 and 11 and 2019-20, it cut central government funding for Wirral Council by 85%. According to the Local Government Association, the funding for local authorities announced for in the budget won't help councils meet all of the extra costs and cost and demand pressures they face just to provide services at today's levels. The LGA has also expressed disappointment that there is no additional funding to address existing pressures on adult social care services, as well as the fact that public health funding has not been increased. The association is among those to have pointed out that the potential rise in local government caused spending power over the next three years will also be dependent on councils, increasing council tax by 3% per annum. So local people will again feel the effects of central government cuts, the burden of which the government is passing on to councils. The crisis in adult numeracy and literacy skills is an issue that must be addressed as a matter of urgency. So while the Chancellor partially acknowledged this with an announcement of a new UK-wide numeracy programme to improve basic math skills, the funding fell well short of meeting what's needed. The Treasury's Twitter account posted that it would help up to 500,000 adults improve their numeracy. This falls far short of meeting the needs of the 17 million adults in the UK that government's own figures suggest have the numeracy level expected of primary school children. And where were the funds to address the adult literacy crisis? There are over 7 million adults who the Natural Lit Literacy Trust estimates have very poor literacy skills. That is 16.4% 16, 16 of the adult population. Where is the Chancellor's ambition to help them? As COP26 is underway at what is a critical moment for our planet, astonishingly the Chancellor, Chancellor announced he would cut taxes on domestic flights. It was an irresponsible act and one which insults young people in particular and those most affected by climate change around the world. The OBR has estimated this will result in around 410,000 more passenger journeys a year at the very time when our government should be showing leadership on the international stage. The Chancellor failed to, to increase international aid to 0.7% of gross national income, once again letting down the world's poor, poorest people. While there was extra money for the NHS, what the Chancellor failed to mention was that if the government's health and care bill becomes law 
from next April, the structure of the NHS will fundamentally change. Instead of a national health service run as a public service in England, there will be around 42 local health and care systems, each based on a business model, with major opportunities for big business to take over the delivery of services instead of the NHS. If this is allowed to happen, we will increasingly see large amounts of public money that should be spent on patient care going into the pockets of shareholders, as has been so eloquently expressed by the member for Nor Norwich South this afternoon. And we will also see increasing numbers of health service staff no longer able to work for the NHS, and so they will find themselves ineligible for agenda for change rates of pay. Mr. Madam Deputy Speaker, this budget fails to give local councils the funding they need to deliver crucial public services after over a decade of Tory Conservative austerity. It fails to tackle the growing cost of living crisis and it fails to address the urgency of the climate crisis. The Chancellor talked of a new age of optimism. It might be for him, but for far too many, this budget fails to deliver. Kate Osborne. Thank you, Madam Deputy.